Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Paul and in this Red Game Telecom video we're going to be talking about AMD Zen benchmarks again. And we're going to be questioning, is Zen really faster than Broadwell? Because we've seen it in results, right? Um, which of course were the hot chip conference and since then there's been a lot of discussion. Now I've already put part one of my technical analysis of the Zen cores and processor and I'm working on part two. There's just a lot of information that AMD have actually released at hot chips and it's now appearing on the internet and to be honest I'm actually surprised with the level of detail they're going into with these technical slides in fact it's more than what I anticipated for them to release for several months um, because ultimately the processor is not even out yet so I will be doing that but I don't want to just hurl through it in this particular video because it would be unfair to you for me to do a half assed job. With that said, several people are emailing me or writing on Facebook and asking a very simple question, is Zen really going to be able to deliver what AMD are promising? I'm going to give a couple of disclaimers before I start this. The first is that I'm not really biased towards any company. Um, I am slightly biased towards the PC platform when it comes to gaming, but that's just because I prefer the customization it offers. But when it comes to actual Intel versus AMD or AMD versus Nvidia or what have you, don't really care. I just go with, in my own personal life, whichever offers the best value for money. And in my professional life, it's whatever provides me the best performance when I'm doing video editing or what have you, because that's what I've got to do. Um, and the second caveat is it is, at the end of the day, engineering samples. And that actually runs into a couple of problems. The first is that we can't verify the results that AMD are showing us. So typically, and I'm going to go through this in a pretty quick manner in terms of uh, my explanation here. Typically, a reviewer, a hardware reviewer, is given a reviewer's guide. The reviewer's guide basically tells the reviewer at a given resolution, at a given hardware spec, what type of performance they should get. So for example, if the performance is plus or minus, let's say two or three percent, everything's good. You know that your system is working pretty much in accordance to how the company, whether it's Nvidia, whether it's AMD, whether it's Intel, whatever, had envisaged the project to do that. So it's, let's say for the sake of argument, you're benchmarking Doom at 4K and you're getting 61 frames a second in Vulkan with X amount of anti-aliasing and everything else. And they tell you that you should be getting 62. Well, you're fine. You're within the margin of error. However, if on the other, if you're getting 60 nine then you think to yourself mm, okay there's something definitely going on here what is it but if it goes to like 75 or 80 then you think okay what is happening what's going on am i not enabling certain specs have i uh, tweaked something in the control panel and similarly if you're getting much lower performance then you also start to question it and you would perhaps write to the um the representative who first uh, spoke to you about giving you the hardware or if you've bought it on your own time you would still contact the company and ask them what the hell's going on with that said we can't do that with Zen because we don't actually have it in our grasp we can't tweak the benchmark we can't physically touch the process and verify the various memory settings they're using or the clock speeds they're using and this also comes down to the Intel versus AMD system for example we don't know what speeds Intel were running at in terms of memory versus what speeds AMD were. It's most likely they're using very similar configurations because it would be very unusual for them not to do that. Um, from what I'm hearing through the grapevine, it was 16 gigabytes of DDR4, 2400 megahertz, but that was only the AMD systems and I'm not able to verify either the AMD system specifications in terms of the memory configuration, let alone Intel. So, I personally believe it's probably the same, but I obviously don't want to say it is because ultimately A, I wasn't there and B, I didn't set up the systems. The second issue is that, well, Blender itself is only one benchmark. So I've mentioned this a couple of times over, but different benchmarks benefit different 
processors in different ways. It's not necessarily that a benchmark is going to completely misrepresent the particular piece of hardware, it's just that it might slightly pip it. So for the sake of this video, let's assume that from what I'm hearing, or actually we can do the tests ourselves if we slow down the video, that it was a couple of seconds faster on Zen compared to Broadwell, right? It could be that if you were to do another test with a completely different benchmark, Zen would be perhaps one to two seconds slower. I'm not saying it is, because obviously we've only seen one result and I have not got engineering samples, but it's possible. Or it could be completely neck and neck even, and AMD decided to show the best performance possible. This is one of the reasons that they've shown um, crossfire results with Ashes of Singularity. We all know about that, and it does very much match the performance of a GTX 1080. However, if you actually look at two RX 480s in crossfire, they ruffle stomp a GTX 1070, single GTX 1070, and actually in most benchmarks they do very closely match a GTX 1080. They don't quite beat it, but they're very damn close. And in DirectX 12 slash uh, asynchronous compute heavy games, then you can start seeing AMD catching up and actually beating and surpassing regular versions of the GTX 1080. And I say regular very closely because obviously if you start comparing um, third party coolers versus third party coolers then all bets are off for everyone concerned. This one's a biggie. This one's very important. We don't know the final clock speeds of Zen and this means the entire lineup of Zen. We don't know the clock speed. What we do know is the engineering sample is running at 3 gigahertz which is fine and Intel's processor which was a 6900K was also running at the same clock speed which is 100% fair because AMD haven't nailed in the final results yet what they were trying to show is a clock for clock comparison their product beats Intel and I 100% respect their methodology now if my memory serves me correctly the 6900K has a base clock of 3.2 gigahertz um, it has an 8x16 configuration, so that's 8 cores, 16 threads because of hyper-threading. And I believe the maximum turbo frequency was 3.7. It might have been 3.6, but I believe it's 3.7. So, yeah, I believe it's 3.7. I think the 6800 was 3.6. Yeah, so it's 3.7. But regardless of that, we don't know whether Zen is going to be able to match that or not. Now if it does, and let's face it, because it is, at the end of the day, only early engineering samples, 3 gigahertz could be easy. We could be seeing Zen run at 4 gigahertz, we could see it run at 4.5 gigahertz for all we know, we just don't particularly know the fine details. So because of that, we know that 3 gigahertz is the lowest that we can expect. AMD supposedly had stated multiple times over that it is not the final clock speed. They had said that it is not even slightly close to the final clock speed, but not close to the final clock speed. What is close is like, is 3.5 close to the final clock speed? I mean, it depends on what you consider close, right? So yeah, ultimately it, it comes down to your opinion in the short term and ultimately reality in the long term because reality really is going to be the answer to everything and this one's kind of a bit of a, a thing as well and there is still a lot about the processor itself some of the details some of the the nitty gritty itty bitty pieces that we don't know despite the fact that AMD have released a hell of a lot of information um, on the processor we know they've redesigned a lot of the basic components which actually go into Zen. They've increased the amount of memory bandwidth available. They've added SMT. They've improved branch prediction. They've drastically improved caching. They have and a whole bunch of additional stuff for um, low power consumption. They've improved level 2, level 3 and level 1 cache. In fact the level 3 cache alone is 5 times faster whereas level 1 and level 2 are about 2 times faster which is a lot better. We're seeing better branch prediction, better branch prediction with, um, I'm sorry, miss 
branch misprediction. Um, we're starting to see improvements in um, in just single precision performance as a whole, and that's really awesome. You know, that there's a whole bunch of stuff that we could go through there, which shows us that Zen is redesigned from the ground up. One of the slides AMD have released tells us that a CPU complex, CCX, is four cores connected to a level three cache. Now, that's really interesting because AMD are very modular in their approach, and I actually really like the idea of modularity when it comes to computing. It means that you can very easily start to go the Lego approach, for layman's terms, and basically fit, plug, and tweak as you need for different scenarios. Now, a full Summit Ridge processor is two of these complexes, so that's eight cores, 16 threads, so that would be the processor they debuted against the 6900K. They say that the level 3 cache is 16 weight associative, 8 megabytes, mostly exclusive of level 2, so that means that pretty much most of the data in level 3 and level 2 are going to be different, and level 3 cache is made of four slices by low order address interleaves and finally every core can access every cache with same average latency unfortunately we don't know exactly all of that information but it theoretically means from what i'm reading the level that core three can access the cache exclusive to core two which is really cool and actually very much like if memory serves how consoles work when they're dealing with the cache and it's quite interesting because the Jaguar processors, they actually work across, and Jaguar, by the way, just for those who are uninitiated, is the processor which is inside the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. Um, and I'm assuming it's going to be the same that's in the Neo and in the Scorpio. That's not been confirmed by Microsoft or Sony, but it looks like it is the same processor in the, in the Neo given the leaks. <sighs> that was a long sentence. And basically, it means that each module can snoop. So, for example, in the case of a level, of, of sorry, of uh, of module one, it can snoop into module two. The problem is there is some cachey, um, there is a lot of latency there, and it can be as bad as actually going back to system RAM on the PS4. But this means absolutely nothing when it comes to Zen, and all we can do is wait. So, basically, I've talked about a whole bunch of crap for the last like. Well, I don't know how long I've been recording now. About 13-ish minutes, apparently. And you might say to yourself, Well, I wasn't really that sure going into this video, and now I'm even less sure. And yeah, you, you should be. And my whole thing with anything is to always tr treat things with an open mind, listen to what the company have to say, but don't work yourself up into a frenzy that it's going to be better than oral sex. Because, believe me, it takes a lot of stuff to be better than that. And ultimately, until we get the product in our homes, we won't know what the final performance of the processor is. But, there are some other stuff that we can start to factor in. And this actually may be even more important than the final performance of the board and the final production of the CPU. And I know you're thinking to yourself, what the hell? What is that? Well, it really is what AMD can counter Intel with in terms of the performance versus pricing. I've mentioned a couple of times over that personally, I would much rather have a processor which is worse single core performance, but has more cores available at a lower price. So let's just cut through the muster and say that let's say the 6900k costs about 1100 bucks when it was released if memory serves it was expensive it was like a thousand eleven hundred dollars something like that you know what i'm just gonna not be a lazy git and i'll like try googling it for you let me, let me see let me see all right I'm, I'm gonna be really lazy and just go to amazon and i'm just gonna go to .co.uk because that's what amazon defaulted me to all right so it's it's costing around 969 pounds Whereas if I was to type in the 6700K, I believe it's around 300. Yeah, it's a few pennies under 300. So you can basically say there's just a bit over 3. Point, let's say 3.3 times the pricing between the 6900K and the 6700K. 
Let's ignore everything else. Let's ignore the amount of cash. Let's ignore the clock speeds. Let's just focus on the number of cores. Because otherwise, I'm going to go insane. And there's possibility that you'll see me in a loony bin in a few weeks. The bottom line is, it holds double the number of cores, double the number of threads. And that's a lot extra for the 6900K. But supposing, yes, it's not quite as fast as an overall processor. But let's say AMD managed to wrangle this thing in at like 350 pounds so you're looking at like 900 bucks for the 6900k and zen comes in at the high end eight core 16 thread thing and it costs like 350 so you're looking at slightly slower single core performance than skylake or kb lake or whatever intel have out at the time your guess is as good as mine and yet a slightly less performance if you count all of the cores than the 6900k theoretically i'm just giving the example here yet it's better value than the 6900k because it's let's say a third the price just rounding it up but it also is let's say only a slight fraction more than the 6700k or the 60 or the 7700k or whatever they've got out but has double the number of cores double the number of threads so AMD are going to win a lot of points there because most people cannot afford £1,100 or whatever the equivalent is to buy a processor, then the motherboard, and the motherboard's another thing. How much is that going to be for a decent gaming motherboard versus a 6900K or whatever and its equivalent motherboard, which I believe is LGA 2011 um, is the motherboard. Oh, so many bloody socket types. You can't you can't blame me for getting one. So let's just assume that you're looking at like thirteen, fourteen hundred pounds for a good sixty nine hundred K. Plus you've got the memory on top of that, which obviously you need to buy with the with the Zen processor anyway. It's not like the memory's going to come free with it. So if you can save like two thirds of your budget for gamers, that's really huge because that can go into more important things like GPU but it also means that for power users you've got a cheap awesome video e editing rig which presumably could also be used for 3D work or you could use it for gaming or you could use it for whatever the hell you want now I'm not using this as a sales pitch for Zen because ultimately AMD's performance reports could be really bogus or they could be really accurate or they could be being really conservative by which I mean they know, they know that they could get to 4.5 gigahertz without any tri without any trial or tribulations with their with their architecture, and in fact they might be able to turbo up to 5 gigahertz, but they're not revealing that. They're just like, nah, the engineering samples are running at 3 gigahertz. That's it. You don't know what the company really are able to put out, and I'm not saying that that's what it is. I don't want to make you excited. I'm just simply saying keep an open mind. So my theory is, assuming these results are roughly accurate, Zen is going to be an awesome processor for a lot of folks. Is it going to be the coming of, um, you know, is it going to be the second coming? Probably not. There are going to be definitely scenarios and definitely some people who want Intel just because it makes more sense for their usage scenarios. But, you know what? I'm I'm pretty damn happy with what I'm seeing of Zen so far. So I for one am happy. I'm for one am convinced that it's going to be a lot of a lot of interesting uh, a lot of interesting benchmarking coming our way. Anyway, I'm not sure that I actually resolved anything with this video, but um, I don't actually know what the but was. I, I it I thought I'd get to it when I said but, which is one of the reasons I elong elongated that. Turns out, no, didn't get to it. Not even slightly. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was a bit of a weird one. Anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I'll uh, see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.